we have somebody here in our midst who won four out of the 10 categories at the ADS photo competition. And including, if you can see this, the cover is the grand prize and that is Trevor Hoff. Thank you very much for the introduction, Larry. I just wanna start with a couple of disclaimers right off the bat here. Uh, I'm not a professional photographer in any way. Four years ago, I started growing my first dahlia. After a year of growing them and not being able to capture their beauty on the camera, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go buy a nice camera. And so I, buy, I spent $1,000 on what to me was an exceptional amount to pay for a camera. And I started taking pictures in that third year and I started learning how to, to take photos. And um, I've watched a ton of YouTube videos and I've read books. And so I've learned a lot over those three years to sort of be at the point where I'm at. For this presentation, I'm going to focus on simple tips that anyone with a camera can take to improve their photos. I'm not going to get into, into any tech talk, any f-stops and any of that business. But for reference, for some of the photos that are in here, you can't achieve the effects easily uh, without additional skills. So for example, the uh, photo of Sandaya Melody here, there's three separate lighting sources on, on that image and there's a black background behind it. And I have very expensive lens on it. So to ch achieve some of this is a little difficult. And so, you know, maybe it's not me playing it at a fair level with uh, some of the other people that are, are entering the, the, the contest, just because I have invested so much time and money. And then also all photos in the presentation are my own, but I'm very happy to share with anybody if, if anybody would like some to use some, I'm happy to share them. Just reach out to me. The, the first simple sub thing to talk about is choosing your subject. You want to have that perfect bloom. It, it really is just as much when I go out to take photos as if I'm looking to pick flowers to take to, to the show for the day. If the bloom in front of you is perfect, isn't perfect, it doesn't matter what your skills are, you're not going to be able to, to make it look magical. And so that's your first step is avoid any blown centers, avoid anything with insect damage or, or faded blooms. Secondly, if there's something to make it more interesting, because as much as a daily is beautiful and it's magical and, and we love them so much, when you've looked at 250 single blooms in a photo contest, all that are pretty basic, at, at some point you need something to make it unique. Uh, sometimes that can be water droplets. After a rainstorm, I love going out and taking photos. Also, if you have bees, frogs, hummingbirds, any of those things are far more likely to, to draw interest in your photography if it is more than just that daily, as much as we do love them. So this is just a, a bit of an example of, of Yvonne, which is a water lily. And so, yeah, this one may not be quite show ready in that the, the center's not fully open. But it was right after a rainstorm, and so we got nice raindrops on it. Uh, I'm using my, my good camera, and so I'm able to blur out the background. That's one of the biggest advantages to when you get into higher-end photography equipment, is that you're able to, to blur out that background equipment through the settings that you set up. And so it makes the flower pop that much more when you don't have the distractions of everything else behind it, the foliage and such. So next up is an importance is framing your subject. Uh, I have a few example photos of, of what to do and what not to do after this, but we'll just talk about this. So first off is the rule of thirds. So when you're looking at an image, you wanna think about it in three separate parts. It's a sort of separate it. So this one with the frog here, I have one third that has the frog, one third that has the really nice part of the the, the center of the bloom, and then a third that's down here. And what that does is it draws your attention towards the key subject, the most uh, attractive part of that photo. And so that's the rule of thirds. And it's, it's as much as I thought it was crazy at first when I started reading that in books, it, the photos of mine that do well uh, very often do uh, have this, th this in place. Uh, next one is avoiding distracting elements. If there's any stakes, posts, rope, ties, anything in that photograph, you can still have a beautiful photograph that captures that dahlia very well. But if you're looking to use that photo in a photo contest or you want to uh, blow it up and hang it on your wall, it, those distractions are always going to, 
to make you wish you had you'd moved that bloom. Uh, change the angle of approach is the next step. The absolute worst thing you can do is take a picture of a bloom staring right at the center of it straight on. You always want to get off to the angle, get down lower, or, or often in, in my garden because I have 12 inch raised beds and then the bloom is six feet tall, you'll see me out there in a ladder to, to try to get a, a good photo because it, you know if I'm taking it from down below and then you're looking up at the blue sky and behind it, the blue sky is going to be, could be really distracting or it might be a wonderful element. Next up, try getting up close and personal. So I think the photo here is, is a great example that I got right up there. These frogs are extremely patient, but I was, I was very close. This is actually taken with my, my cell phone and it shows the quality that you can get. It, it is an iPhone 11 Pro, so it's very new technology and they're very well known for their camera capabilities. But it, it, this was just, it was in my pocket. It's what I had, so I took the photo and it turned out absolutely wonderful. So don't uh, hesitate to get up close. But also on the opposite side of that is you can always crop later. So if, if you're not sure exactly whether something is going to be in, in the view, take that picture and then you can always crop it later. Even most uh, cell phone apps all have an editing capability where you can go in and crop that photo to try to make it interesting, to, to cut out that a stake that's off to the right or that tie or, or anything else. Uh, back in the olden days when uh, the digital cameras didn't have as good a resolution, you didn't want to do as much uh, zooming in and cropping, but now you, you can crop a long ways and still get a really great photo. And finally, I have there, consider relocating the bloom. Uh, with that one, if, if there is distracting elements in the photo, move the dahlia, right? <laughs> we're, we're able to cut them. So again, I'm assuming it's your garden. Uh, please don't cut blooms in other people's gardens. <laughs> cut it off and move it to somewhere where there is no distractions. Uh, I usually take, I have a piece of, of rebar that I, I'll, I'll take out there with me and, I, and, a, and a clip. And so I just attach the bloom to the rebar and the clip and I put it somewhere that's not going to have those distractions. Some people may say that's cheating because that's not how it is in the garden, but you, you, you can get a beautiful image uh, that way. And, and that's the key goal. And you're still capturing the beauty of that bloom. So really quickly here, just uh, this is another photo I took of uh, Clearview Debbie. And again, so this is one of those get up close and really show the, the, the beauty of a daily. And you can see I'm also using the rule of thirds where I have this whole third of the picture as negative space. And when you're doing that, it can be very beneficial if the, 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 the center of the dahlia is pointing towards that negative space. Uh, that way it just looks like it's looking off in that direction. So anything in this red background is saying, don't do this. Uh, so this is a perfect example of avoiding distracting elements. There's nothing that can ever be done for this photo. A fairly nice bloom of Hamilton Lillian. There's a bit more center to open on it, but there's no way oh, oh, somebody really talented can edit this out, can edit this rebar out, can edit out this distracting bloom, but there's, there's nothing you can do to make that a, a photo that's going to win a, a contest or that I would want on my wall. So here's another one of just what not to do. And I had to go back three years to find a photo where I've done this. This is where I'm saying change the angle. There's nothing worse than taking a photo straight on at, at, at the center. It, it gives no sense of the depth of the bloom. It's uh, again, this blue, it's right in the center. Uh, this photo is very unappealing in my opinion. So next up, lighting. Uh, it plays a huge role in whether you're going to get a good photo or not. Timing is important. The best light is from sunrise to 10 a.m. generally. Uh, photographers refer to the golden hour, which is the first hour after sunrise. That is just about always when I'll take my camera out there. On, on weekends when I don't have to rush off to work, I'll head out there with my camera first thing in the morning. And just the lighting is in a better position. It doesn't cast horrible shadows. It, it, it makes the the blooms uh, almost pop. And next best is just be before sunset in the evening. If you don't, don't have the opportunity to take photos first thing in the morning or late at night, look for days that are, are, are bright but overcast because it is that harsh sun, which I'll show examples that can really ruin a photo. 
So this is just an example of my garden. Uh, you can see where the sun is in the sky, giving a really nice starburst effect coming through the trees. Uh, it's about 30 minutes to an hour before sunset, and it really just makes the, the color of, of the blooms really, really show through. This is a, another example of what not to do. And this is, I don't know why I was doing this because I can tell from where this photo is, I've staged this photo and it's horrible. The sunlight, just so harsh, making shadows in behind here, uh, very distracting uh, and it's out of focus as well. But the key thing I'm trying to, to show is just uh, really avoid harsh sunlight because it can ruin a photo quickly. Next tip is avoid movement. Anytime that there's either either you are moving when you press that shutter button or whether the bloom is moving, it will take it out of there. You will lose some level of, of focus on those blooms. A any of that, again, as you zoom in, it makes it worse and worse and worse. And so something to consider is to consider a tripod if that's possible. In the daily garden, again, it can be a problem when you have raised beds and that it's tough to find a tripod that gets as high as you would, you would like to be able to get the angles you, would, you want. One thing you can do is try to, where possible, lock your elbows into your sides. It just gives you a steadier base and stand with your, your feet shoulder width apart. Just try to give yourself the most solid base you can. If you're really reaching over a set of another bloom to try to get the angle, you, there's gonna be some movement. And then obviously avoid windy days because there's nothing you can do about a bloom that's all over the place. Uh, really quickly, photo editing, and I'm not talking Photoshop or uh, really high tech, uh, more difficult stuff to do. Most mo modern smartphones have powerful but simple to use photo editing. Just simple sliders that allow you to uh, brighten or, or, or change the color a little bit crop the photo, really simple steps that can can make your photo look a lot better. But if you're entering, if you plan to enter that in a photo contest, just make sure you know the rules of, of what is allowed and isn't allowed when it comes to edited photos, uh, because it can be pretty strict. Uh, you can see here, this is one that I entered in the digital, digital Lightroom uh, category of the ADS show. So the original photo uh, is in the middle, obviously that's Wins Farmer John. And so I took it and all I did is I just changed the colors of it, superimposed them into the same photo, reversed some of them. And, you know, it's uh, making sports this way is easier than letting nature do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of people don't like this uh, type of thing. And so just to wrap up a little bit here is uh, just to show sort of where some of my successes were is that I, I won best photograph in show with this one uh, at the 2019 national show in Grand Rapids. And again, you'll, you'll see the photos that are often winning these type of, of contests, there's something more to them than just a dahlia. It really is having something additional that adds interest and makes the judge think, I really like that. And then as Larry had shown on the cover of the bulletin, this was my photo that won the ADS photo contest this year. This was, uh, so Snow Ho Doris is right after a, a heavy rainstorm. I ran out there to clean everything up. And sure enough, this bloom had got knocked over and the, the frog was using it as a little bathtub. And so I went madly running back to my house to get my camera. And luckily he was still there and uh, sat there while I took about 150 photos trying to get one just right with no distracting elements in it or anything else. And so then finally, just to wrap up what some of my 2021 goals, because there are still some things that I cannot achieve with a camera at this point. I want to figure out how to best capture dark red dahlias, especially outside. It is so difficult. I think I've done a great job with Manor Jane here, but I can only do this inside against a white wall. If I try to try the same thing outside with a darker background, the colors are just so off. I find light yellow blooms in the area of like Hamari Accord extremely difficult to capture. And so I'm gonna work on that. And then I wanna take a lot more outside uh, shots, uh, more garden shots. I say less studio shots, but really the studio is my room once I, my spare room, once I take out all of the, uh, the seedlings I have in here, uh, it becomes a, a photo studio for the, for the blooms. That is all that I have today. Um, uh, I'd love at some point to give a more in-depth for those of you that have fancy cameras and want to learn more, I'd certainly be willing to share that. And so I'm very open to uh, take any questions that you may have. Uh, Trevor, I just wanted to mention that I was very surprised to have some success with 
a couple of photos of mine and my secret, I've never had a real camera other than a point and shoot up until September, about first of September when we were having a virtual Dahlia show here, I got an iPad and took pictures on iPad for that. And, and what Trevor told me, and I was just shocked that any of my photos went anywhere. And Trevor said to me, it's not necessarily always the equipment, it's the eye and being able to add interest and to, to know to, like he said before, to make sure that there are not uh, distracting things in the background that distract. And I, I put together the videos from the ADS uh, photo contest. They're on the ADS website if you haven't seen them. And I saw a, a number of examples of some would have re been really, really good photos that did not place. And you'd look in the background, there's a hose on the ground, or maybe there's the tip of, of a, a stake or something like that, or the edge of a, a tag that's, that's ident on the pole identifying the dahlia. Those are things that if, if you enter in a contest, that'll uh, take it out. But also if you're just entering photographs for, for pleasure or to share with other people, those are things that, that I've learned to avoid. And there's some questions here from Tom. Yeah, I, I see those, I'll address those. So the first question from Tom is, have you tried photo stackings? Uh, no, I haven't. So for those of you that don't know what photo stacking is, is with, uh, with the more technological cameras, you're able to, you're really able to focus on a specific place in a bloom. So you could take 15 pictures of one dahlia, each focusing one sliver at a time further into that bloom. And then you, you merge them all together using photo uh, stacking uh, in, in Photoshop. And what it does is it grabs the most in focus from all of those and makes one just spectacularly focused image. And uh, it's, uh, I've, I've just never had time. I've, I've been more focused on uh, in my, you know, when everything's in bloom, I'm trying to get all the photos of everything that's blooming in the garden. And it's just one of those things that being new, I haven't learned yet, but it's certainly something I'm interested in. Uh, the next question about uh, the avoid movement slide is great. How did you set it up? I'm assuming that is referring to the, the, the arrangement of, of, uh, of the blooms. So I'm assuming Tom's question is, is, is about this, uh, they, what they call, they call this a flat lay in the photography slash Instagram floral world. And so really it is just on a table. If you look under Keras 150 right here and to the left of Blackberry Ripple, you'll see they're just sitting on a table. So these, all I've gone is I've went and I've cut the stem off right at the, the base of the bloom. I've laid them all in a way to try to minimize as much as possible any of the table showing through, but you can certainly see areas where it is coming through. Looking to, to for a good place to take the photo. This was one that I had to move the table a couple times because the sun kept moving and moving as I was trying to get it all, all set up. So as much as these things often look, maybe they, they, they look simple or the, that you think it's, I'm taking one picture and getting a great result. Uh, it often takes a lot of work to get something like this set up. I want to know the name of every flower. <laughs> we'll, we'll take that uh, offline <laughs> and it's funny because you're supposed to I entered I think I won first place for that photo this year uh, in the ADS for the multiple blooms uh, version and you're supposed to say the names of the blooms I, I told them that uh, I said multiple blooms if you need me to name them all I, I think I can but, uh, but luckily they didn't make me do that what kind of camera do you have, Trevor? Yeah, so the, the camera I bought three years ago was a Sony a7 II. And uh, it, so with the kit lens, it at the time was a thousand. It's actually gone up a little bit. Um, you can get them secondhand for, for a reasonable price. Photography equipment holds its value very well. Um, it, it's one of those things you can't, you know, there's a lot of things you, you can expect to get a great saving buying secondhand. Uh, photo equipment, not so much, but you can, you can save some dollars. I'll likely be upgrading. There's a new model coming out fairly soon that is going to be, it's $4,000, but uh, it, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, hey, it is what it is. Hey, whatever floats your boat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but when you see how much you spend on the dahlias and uh, they come and go, at least with the camera, it'll it'll last me a lot of years and it won't get virus. And Colin writes, wrote in the chat, I concur with dark red, nearly impossible to get a good picture of a dark red. Purple is equally difficult. So. If, I, if, I, if I figure it out this year and I find a magical formula of time of day or lighting or whatever, I will certainly pass that on to the entire daily world because uh, we need it. If you ever want practice with a purple, um, Cbex Hilda is a great one to practice with because it's this, from a photographer's standpoint, a nasty purplish bluish color. It, it probably took me you know, 100 frames with different lighting and different white balance and different everything before I got something kind of close. Several other people had tried the same thing and had never really gotten quite as close as where I got, and I wasn't a, a perfect match. Definitely can be difficult. All right. Thank you very much.